When I was first starting on Machine, I had a lot of questions that I needed answered. Where do I get samples? What types of music should I be listening to sample? Where do I get this music from? How do I actually get my samples into Machine? How do I chop these samples and make beats out of them using my machine? How do I get my drums and my samples to line up properly? Well, it took me about four years to figure all this out. And today I'm gonna to share with you a blueprint that I put together over the last four years of how to sample in three easy steps on machine. In about 10 minutes, you're gonna walk away with the three step process that you can use to choose, chop, and flip samples creatively using your machine. So let's jump on over to machine and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so before we get started, I've gotta clear the air on the legal issues that are surrounding sampling. This doesn't constitute legal advice, okay? This whole entire tutorial is not to tell you to break copyright laws, okay? Because sampling does have legal ramifications, especially if you're trying to use samples for profit. If you wanna find out more information about the legal issues surrounding sampling, go ahead and Google legal issues surrounding sampling. There's a pretty good Wikipedia article on the subject, okay? So with that out of the way, let's jump on ahead and get started. So the way that I like to sample using machine is through YouTube. In particular, I like to search through different sounds and songs through YouTube and find cool things to sample. I've got some great ideas for you. Typically, I'm listening for funk music, soul music, R&B, typically from the late 1970s. There are a lot of good vinyl channels on YouTube. This is one to start with. It's called Vinyl Archaeology. Um, you can find tons of different soul music, R&B, like I said. I have a whole entire playlist dedicated to sampling uh, rare grooves and, and different breaks and different things, um, you know, just because I, I, I really believe in sampling. So that's uh, somewhere to start. But basically, once I find something to listen to, say, for example, um, this song right here. I'll let you listen to it. Uh, let's get some get something tight, though. All right, so Willie Hutch. I can't play this just because of, uh, I guess, copyright issues. I don't, don't want to get flagged. So basically, what you would basically do in order to get this sound into your machine is copy the URL. All right, um, you got to get the direct URL. Um, let's see, let's get a clean URL. We'd get the direct URL and then take it to a site called officeconverter.com and there's specifically a wave converter. So you can just type in office converter wave into Google and you'll come up onto this page. You take the YouTube URL and click the download and convert button and then instantly you'd have a wave file for you to for you to use inside of your machine. Now there's an intermediate step between finding a good sample on YouTube and then taking the sample and chopping it up. And in particular that step, in my opinion, is making sure that you have a hard drum groove, okay? You want to make sure that before you get started with your beat, before you get started chopping up and flipping a sample, that you've got a solid drum groove first, okay? You can start with the sample in mind and sort of figure out a drum pattern that works within that sample, but for beginners, I typically recommend that you start with a drum pattern, a really hard drum pattern that has the emotion and the feeling and the vibrancy that you want, so that then you can take a sample and then flip it on over top of that hard drum groove, all right? So that makes sure that the energy is there, the emotion of the beat is there, and it makes it a lot easier for you to create on top of drums as opposed to working the other way around. In my, in my opinion, that's the easiest way for you to do things as a beginner. All right, now if you're more advanced, you can obviously start whatever way that you want to. A lot of people find creative inspiration in any way, but I recommend that you do it this way for now, okay? So before you start chopping shit up, you wanna make sure that you've got a hard drum groove, okay? All right, so next thing I would do is when I'm listening for a sample before, I would have picked out a sample that fit a certain criteria. In particular, I'm listening for a sample that has uh, open elements to it, meaning it needs to have chords, it needs to have stab notes, it needs to have open sections and solos of instruments playing that I can use to then chop up into individual notes because that's my style. It'll make more sense what I just said in a moment. But basically, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for chops. Okay, I'm, I'm listening for chops when I'm listening for records to sample. So I'm looking for, in, in particular, I want to repeat that, solos 
okay, within the music that I can then chunk, truncate and chop up the individual notes and flip on top of my drums, okay? Write that down because that's the one thing that makes everything a million times easier to do when you're sampling. So from that sampling section, make sure you're listening for music that fits that criteria, all right? And just for the sake of copyright infringement, I've gone ahead and done that already. I don't want to play the sample that I've gotten off of YouTube already. But note that I did follow the process that I just outlaid for you and did do the things that I just outlaid. I look for a sample that has open notes. All right, and the reason being is because you can chop an individual note, like you can see here. I took an individual note off of this sample and I have then chopped it up or chopped the, the other parts of that note off and now I'm going to flip it over a drum groove that I've already created. Let's listen to the drum groove before I start experimenting with the note. Okay, so it's as simple as that. You basically create that drum groove and then make sure that it fits in a vibe and emotion that, that you're looking for. And then typically I'll go in into a sample library that I have saved on my computer and try to find open notes or chords, maybe like piano chords that I can work with or maybe a synthesizer solo that I can grab individual notes just like this one and sort of take and then put in pad mode and play at different different uh, tones okay, or different different pitches. Okay, so now that we've got this note that we're working with, the individual note that we sampled, um, what we're gonna do now is take this note and throw it into pad mode. Now there are several ways that you can do this. If you could, if you found a solo, basically you could chop individual notes and put many different notes on pads. But in the case of this, I took one note, threw it into keyboard mode on machine, and now I can play it sort of like an instrument on its own. Alright, so that's just 16 level pad mode on machine. So now you can sort of experiment with step three. It's basically taking this sample and flipping it over your drum groove. So you can sort of experiment with different um, FX settings, you can experiment with different pitches, you can experiment with different, um, I guess, sort of notes that you're playing in, and progressions and things like that to sort of find something that fits the drum groove, alright? Experiment with the in individual notes, alright? Just like an instrument. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So basically I've thrown this note into 16 level pad mode by pressing shift and pad mode. So now I have this one note transposed over 16 different levels. I'm gonna sort of play around with this, sort of maybe add some effects to see if I can get this to sound correct. So you guys basically get the point. We just created a hard drum groove, took a sample, got it from YouTube, basically took an individual slice of a note out, grabbed a single note from that sample, transposed it on 16 levels by pressing shift and pad mode to get into keyboard mode, experimented with some sort of uh, melody within the 16 levels 
with those notes and I just sort of freestyled something real quick. It's uh, not great yet, but you know, we could sort of improve upon this by improving the tones of what we've got working and it's, it's a good foundational starting point. It's a good way to find inspiration. And in my opinion, that way of sampling is a lot more effective than just straight looping samples on your machine just because uh, of the copyright issues and just because of the creative issues. It makes it a lot easier for you to come up with something creative on your own, a lot e more creative on your part of having to start with something basic instead of um, recreating and, and re-manipulating someone else's sound. You're, you're starting you know, sort of like an instrument and it makes makes it a little bit more easy for you to, to allow your creative freedom to shine through. Well, I'd like to hook you up with a few video lessons that you could use to go much more in depth into sampling on machine and sort of learn my entire process so I can break this down in detail just because we don't have time to cover everything in a short 10 minute tutorial. But basically over the last year, I've been putting together a library of video lessons called Beat School. Basically inside of this program, you can look over my shoulder while I show you step-by-step -step techniques about how to improve your craft on machine. As you can see here, this is what it looks like inside of the program. We've got tons and tons of content specifically breaking down the process of sampling on machine. I'll jump in into a session on machine. You'll be able to look over my shoulder while I show you how to build samples on machine and how to create sample-based beats. We can talk about the basics that we didn't talk about today, which is how to build great drum grooves. I talked to you about how to master machines creative workflow, learning more about your hardware and software, and even advanced concepts like mixing great hip hop beats on machine. I reveal my entire formula for making great quality beats on machine. There are over 30 plus lessons in here right now on sampling and sound design and drums and all that great stuff. But the great news is that today, I'm letting a few people try out this Beat School program and learn all this stuff for free. All right, so all you gotta do is click the link below to start your free trial. You're gonna be, once you click that link, you're gonna be taken to a page that looks like this. And um, basically, you're gonna be allowed to start your free trial of Beat School today. There are no contracts. Basically, click this button here. You're gonna be taken to a page where you enter your name and your credit card information. This is a seven day trial, okay? If you don't like what's inside of the program, uh, just email me directly at rob at hip hop rally beat school. And my phone number is even listed on the page as well. You can call within those seven days and I'll make sure that your card is not charged. All right? And if you do enjoy the program and you enjoy the live workshops that we host, talking about all types of subjects related to machine and the membership community that we have, do nothing and you can stay a member for just 38 bucks and 60 cents a month. Okay, so there are no contracts. This is a pay as you go, month to month thing. So, like I said, and uh, not a payment plan. So. Click the button below to learn more about sampling on machine. Get your free seven-day trial to my Beat School program. I'll see you inside the Beat School. Peace.